Joining us now is Senate Majority Whip Dick Durbin of Illinois. He's chairman of the Judiciary Committee. It's great to have you on this morning. We have a lot to talk with you about. First of all, what's your takeaway from Tuesday's big win for Democrats, and how can they build momentum on it? Well, I think it, uh, it's good news for Democrats because off-year elections traditionally go the other way. Uh, and after our, uh, the good uh, results of two years ago, we were expecting the worst, and many of us were. And the results were encouraging to re-elect Andy Bashir in Kentucky, uh, to see the uh, state of Virginia uh, really shift control to the Democrats at the legislative level, the Ohio vote on re a referendum on a woman's right to choose. All of these things, I think, may make a difference in our evaluation of the coming election. Yeah, and uh, on the issue of abortion, there are a number of issues where it feels like Republicans are not on the same side as where most Americans are. Um, what are some other issues where you think Democrats really can gain ground if they fight hard in the months to come? Well, of course, we look at the last election, and a woman's right to choose was a major issue, as was the question about uh, the legitimacy of government. Uh, people, unfortunately, on the Republican side still cling to the belief that Joe Biden wasn't really elected president, the election denial. That sort of madness has to come to an end. If our democracy is going to survive and prosper, uh, we have to have uh, credible election results accepted by both sides. Until the Trump era, that was the case. So I think election denial is one of the big issues, too. I will tell you, for mm -hmm. younger voters, one of the issues, of course, is the environment. I couldn't uh, agree with them more. We need to make sure the next generation has a fighting chance to have a planet they can live on. Senator Durbin, good morning. Jonathan Lemire here. I wanted to get your uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee is set to vote to authorize subpoenas in that Supreme Court ethics probe. Give us a sense as to wh why we are at this step and what do you think it could yield? Well, I, I can tell you we've tried literally for months to secure additional information after the press disclosures of the lavish gifts that were given to some Supreme Court justices. This is not a new issue for me. I sent a letter to the Chief Justice, signed by a, no a number of other senators, 11 years ago, saying you need a code of ethics. How can you explain that in the entire federal government, everyone is bound by a code of ethics and standards of disclosure except for the nine people on the Supreme Court? Elena Kagan, Supreme Court Justice, put her finger on it. This is a court and our a constitution of a democracy. It is not royalty. And people who want to be treated royally or live royally have no business in public service as far as I'm concerned. And we have disclosures of gifts, lavish gifts that have been given to some of these Supreme Court justices in a way that can't be uh, defended. And the fact is, most of those were not even disclosed. So let's change it. Whether you're appointed by a president who's a Republican or a Democrat, everyone on the Supreme Court should be bound by the same code of ethics as the other federal judges across America. And Senator, switching gears, a few days ago, you became the first Democratic senator, I believe, to call for a ceasefire in the Israel Gaza situation there, the war against Hamas. A few of your colleagues have since joined you. The Biden administration has been pretty firm that they're not calling for a ceasefire. They just want a few brief pauses to get humanitarian aid in uh, and injured civilians out. Why do you think a ceasefire is so necessary? And are you frustrated that the administration and, frankly, the Israeli government aren't listening? Well, I can tell you it's interesting since I made the suggestion that we have a ceasefire mutually agreed on by both sides so long as Hamas releases the hostages which they've taken prisoner. That same proposal was endorsed by Bibi Netanyahu several days ago. It's not a radical idea. The agreement is at least to provide some kind of humanitarian pause. I'm in contact with the head of a hospital in northern Gaza. It is outrageous what they're going through. They're out of medicine completely. They're performing amputations on children without anesthesia. The only pain medicine they have is Tylenol. They're cleaning wounds mm -hmm. with vinegar because they have nothing else to turn to. For God's sake, this is a horrible situation. And if we had a pause to at least uh, assess that kind of humanitarian assistance, I think it's in the best interest of the world. Senator Durbin, you also recently called out House Republicans for what you call their dangerous effort to block much-needed funding for AIDS relief. Despite helping save more than 25 million lives worldwide with efforts in 50 countries around the world, the House GOP is threatening to halt the reauthorization of the U.S. president's emergency plan for AIDS relief, also known as PEPFAR. 
The reason? You say House Republicans are lying. They're falsely, falsely arguing that the program funds abortions abroad. Does it? And what do you say? Not a single penny can be spent on abortions. Uh, and let me go to the bottom line here. George W. Bush and I didn't agree on many things, but I not only agree with him in his creation of PEPFAR, I think it is one of the highlights of his pre presidency. We stepped forward as a nation and said it's just not military might. We are a caring people. And in the midst of an AIDS epidemic, the president, George Bush at the time, George W. Bush at the time, created this program which has saved, as you mentioned, millions of lives across the world. This defines America, and this strategy coming out of the House Republicans is cruel. It is just plain cruel. There are people who are going to die because of this kind of political debate that's going on in their, in their ranks. Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois, thank you very much. I want to.